Deidre, I expect that you're disappointed. Can you talk a little bit about that and then um, talk about maybe what you didn't get to say, uh, what your testimony would be, would have been, and uh, maybe talk about what the future might be? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was definitely emotional when I was called to speak um, in regard to them rejecting um, the appeal before they even heard anybody. Um, that signed up for open forum. We had a full house here tonight. We had multiple people signed up to speak, multiple people that wrote letters and had comments. So I um, have worked, you know, as I found out this out, a statement. I do respectfully object the dismissal of this case without a full hearing. The board cited a procedural error due to the incorrect address on the initial filing. Or due to, um, I filed um, an appeal just due to the incorrect um, address and then they're citing a procedural error on my part that I did not have rights to be able to file this appeal. I filed the appeal on behalf of an agent which is allowed as a, an agent to the city of Loveland because of the impact that this building has on the city. The city was not forthcoming um, in the support of trying to find even the process or procedure for appealing a decision. Um, they were difficult to work with um, within and, and kept saying that they couldn't provide legal advice which I understand that they cannot. I was not asking for legal guidance. I was asking for a process and a procedure to which the council, if you go back and watch, even was trying to hone in on about process. And I was working hard to follow process. I showed up to both meetings to speak. I have worked hard to get the community involved, to write letters. That is our only process that a citizen has. Um, in addition, we did, a, it was beautiful to watch and I would have loved to hear it tonight. The citizens came together. We had multiple citizens, citizens go to the recorder's office. We found the history all the way back to the original where originally all the documents were only to what was online, which was back to 1965. And we went back to the original. It's over 110 years old. And we have found that railroad workers did live in the building. We have confirmed that through the 1920 census. I spent the last 30 days working hard on this appeal, getting people to understand the truth and the facts that were a part of this. We, one of the members, they, they voted three to two. One of the members said they voted on behalf of and call, you can see in the minutes that both D um, Todd Osborne and I are called out in the minutes that we couldn't confirm the history at that time. Well, we have confirmed the history now. We worked so hard. I've got papers after papers confirming that um, both Ephraim Smith lived at 200 Railroad, owned the building, worked as a rail on the railroad as a foreman, and um, William Brooks worked as a brakeman on the railroad who lived at 202. It's been a duplex since the beginning. It has housed our railroad right across the street. I encourage you to go out to 200 Railroad, walk across the street, and you'll see a plaque there that, that talks about the history of our railroad workers who built this city. And the city has just used a procedure against them that they were difficult. They did not work with the city. They did not hear the open forum tonight to, to allow the residents to speak. Um. I tried to get the, uh, the language of the uh, code that they were citing tonight and they had it in front of me, wouldn't, wouldn't let me see it or have it. So I can understand some of that frustration for sure. Um, their decision is probably appealable to the Court of Appeals. Have you thought forward about that at all? This is new news to me tonight. Um, they did not provide any guidance. Everybody who showed up thought they were going to be able to speak tonight. And they, um, they, they held this for, um, for their own benefit. And so we will go back and look at, see what our rights are at this point. I do encourage everyone to continue to write letters and to make sure that they're having their voice heard to the city about not only this process and how it is unfair to not allow community voice to be heard with such our history that is continually to be demolished. Okay, thanks for speaking with me. Thanks.